Ew. Look at his face. It's so ugly. I mean, his eyeballs hanging out. He's so gross. I really hope we don't have to fight this guy in the raid. This is going to be one really ugly boss fight. Phase two. All right, so we're on to phase two now, and we've defeated Nihilus, and now we're facing Darth Sion, that ugly, horrible character. And what we're going to have for the special ability for this phase is going to be called Soothe. We'll remove all stacks of Cycle of Pain and Cycle of Suffering from that single unit. There is no one-time use. There's no global cooldown. You can use it independently on each character as you want. And of course, the raid boss is going to be Darth Sion. And he is going to basically have sort of the same kit as his normal character. Pain is going to be a big debuff going on here. And it's going to, st it's going to stack. So you'll see it's actually going to be called Cycle of Pain, and then once you get five stacks of Cycle of Pain, you're going to get Cycles of Suffering. So his first ability, his basic attack, deals physical damage with a 25% chance to inflict one stack of Cycle of Pain. His second ability is Torment. He deals damage to all enemies, removes 2% term meter per stack of the Cycle of Pain, and then removes another 15 with a stack of Cycle of Suffering. You're going to have more turn removal as you stack up those Cycles of Pain. And Cycle of Suffering, that's going to hurt you a little bit, but that 15% turn meter is actually not that bad. For Menacing Presence, his other ability, he taunts for two turns. Whenever an enemy damages Scion while he's taunting, they have a 25% chance to gain one stack of Cycle of Pain. So, again, more Cycle of Pain going to be stacking on your characters. Held by Hatred, grips all allies' offense up for two turns, then summons reinforcements. So, sort of like Darth Nihilus, where he summons the reinforcements, but now he gives them offense up if they're still alive at that point. After using this ability, he will deal 50% more damage with his next attack. So, he's going to use that, he's going to summon reinforcements, he's going to give offense up to anybody who's still alive, and then he's going to deal damage on his next attack. So something you can use to help avoid that next attack would be great here, some kind of foresight, defense up, anything crit immunity that could help uh, mitigate that damage list a little bit would be great. Lord of Pain, this is his big unique ability. At the end of each unit's turn, that unit has a 50% chance to gain one stack of Cycle of Pain if they damage any enemies during their turn, maximum of five stacks. When you get 5 stacks of Cycle of Pain, they become Cycle of Suffering. So 5 stacks of Cycle of Pain turns into Cycle of Suffering, which then means more term removal on his special ability. For Cycle of Pain, you get 20% bonus offense per stack. This cannot be resisted. So anytime you get it, you're not going to be able to have Snasty up or anything like that that could help prevent the Cycle of Pain from stacking up on your characters. And then Cycle of Suffering, once you get 5 stacks of Cycle of Pain, 150% bonus offense, so you can get all that Cycle of Pain gives you some nice damage boost, but once you get Cycle of Suffering, you get a really significant damage boost, which is going to be great for some of your characters once we go over the strategy so you guys can see what's going on. In addition, Scion gains 5% bonus offense for each stack of Cycle of Pain in the battle, and 50% for each stack of Cycle of Suffering. So you're benefiting your own characters, you're giving yourself bonus offense, you're also going to be helping Scion as well. So there's going to be some strategy here where you're going to have to balance out your Cycles of Pain and Suffering on your own characters, because then you have to make sure that Scion's not going to go crazy and start hanging like a truck on your team. In addition, he has 10% counter chance per stack of Cycle of Pain, 60% for Cycle of Suffering. Bonus offense on your team, you're going to give bonus offense to Scion as well, and now he can counter too. As you'll see when we go through some team comps, Stealth, Foresight, anything that you can help to mitigate that damage from counters is going to be great for this team, for this fight. Impervious Foe, whenever he takes damage, he gains 50% tenacity which is stacking until the end of his next turn in addition he has a hundred percent defense is immune to terminal removal effects tenacity down and defense debuffs so this means defense down is not going to work i'm pretty sure this means the armor shred from sabine is also not going to work the only ability that's going to help you with this apparently is going to be visa's mar with her defense penetration ability on her special where she gives your team defense penetration up which means they're going to be able to cut through some of that armor. So don't try to stack defense down or armor shred. It's not going to work on Darth Sion. He's going to be immune to it, and you're not going to get bonus damage from that. Fearsome Foe, it's basically your special ability for all your bosses. Plus one bonus action, 5% turn meter whenever they take damage. In addition, you know, takes reduced damage from percent damage health effects like Expose, Death Mark. We'll go over that. They're still really good abilities as we go through team comps. And of course, immune to all the usual abilities of Stun, Shock, Ability Block, Day, Stagger etc etc you have sith marauder and sith assassin pretty much the exact same abilities from phase one deals the damage with sith marauder he gains 
he reduces the target enemy health by 10% with damage dealt by his attacks. Sith Assassin, she's going to have the ability where she gives Terminator to all of her allies. So, of course, you want to take her out first and your fights, make sure she never goes. She has a special that can stun and bypass protection. So making sure you prioritize Sith Assassin getting rid of her on the field is going to be a fantastic strategy because that means you're going to have to worry a little bit less about getting your character stunned and losing a lot of health. So that's the mechanics. Let's talk about some of these teams that do work and don't work. So, like I mentioned, Exposes and Death Mark can do a lot of damage in Phase 2 as well, just like in Phase 1. So, of course, your typical JTR teams, Jedi Ray teams, are going to still do a lot of damage. I've seen upwards of 1 or 11 million with teams in there. But Imperial Troopers, and especially Death Trooper, are now really viable for Phase 2. So, if you want to use Jedi Ray in Phase 1, you can use your Imperial Troopers in Phase 2, especially Death Trooper. His Death Mark can do a lot of damage with the right teams. I've seen Imperial Troopers do upwards of 4 million. Night Sisters with a Death Trooper in there have done 3 to 4 million. So, Death Trooper with his Death Mark is a great character to use in Phase 2. And that's the beautiful thing is the max damage health effects they bypass the 100% defense on Scion. He cannot mitigate damage from Exposed, Death Mark, anything that does damage to his max health. Those cannot be mitigated by defense or anything like that. So you're able to still do a huge chunk of damage with those kind of abilities. I've seen also a Rex lead with Chase has done almost 2 million damage. Baze can do max health damage on his special that does the AoE dispel. So that can do a lot of damage too. So a Rex lead with the crit chance that you're going to see from Scion, when he just scores, whenever he scores a critical hit, you're going to see your team gain turn meter. Anything that can call an assist can help mitigate the counter chance from Darth Scion, so your Akbar leads. Anything like that can also do some pretty decent damage here. That's one of the videos I'm going to have is Akbar lead with Commander Luke, Han Solo, Hermit Yoda, and BB-8. They're going to do some pretty decent damage, and you'll see they keep protection up all the way through the fight. At the end, they have like 10-15% protection left when the boss hits in rage, but still, they do a pretty decent amount of damage, they can do assist, and they can bypass that counter chance. So, anything that can stealth as well, so Tebow lead with Ewoks, anything that can give stealth R2-D2, those can help mitigate the counter as well because stealth tunes cannot be countered. So, anything like that. Attacks that can't be countered, Darth Vader's AoE, um, you've seen where you can use a Darth Vader lead or an Asajj lead. Those give Terminator removals that cannot be resisted. However, I'm pretty sure he's still going to be immune to them anyways. So those aren't going to work too well, but you can still do the Vader AoE for the dots. You can stack up some damage there. You've probably seen some people try to run a Palpatine lead. Don't do that. That's a waste of time. Palpatine leads aren't really that good. They'll do about 1 million damage at most. That's just wasting your time. So don't use a Palpatine lead. If you see someone using a Palpatine lead, tell them to stop being so bad. So Death Trooper, Death Mark, Jedi Ray, again, of course, the exposes. But Jedi Ray is going to be pretty useful in Phase 1. You don't have as many teams that are going to do a large amount of damage like Jedi Ray can in Phase 1. So I'd much rather you use Jedi Ray in Phase 1 to help get rid of that phase and do some pretty good damage there. In terms of teams that don't work so well, um, yeah, like I said, uh, Vader lead with the dots. You do have the stacking tenacity on Darth Scion, so you do have to time it correctly, but you can do some pretty decent damage. I've seen Wampa do some pretty good damage with some of these teams as well. Princess Zodi, I tried Princess Zodi, and I came away pretty underwhelmed. Cody doesn't have a lot of protection as it is, and your Sith Marauders can daze the your characters. So if someone on your team gets dazed, that's one less character that you're going to see can assist on his 212th attack, and that's really going to hurt. Scion can counter on his 212th, and since he has so little protection, he's pretty squishy. Scion can pick him apart pretty quickly, as I found out, unfortunately. So that's another team that probably should avoid. In terms of Akbar teams, there was one team I really want to try. I threw it out to some people in the Republic, told them to try it out, see if someone could try it for me. I have not heard from anyone yet, but what this team is is an Akbar lead with Princess Leia, Hermit Yoda, Grand Admiral Thrawn, and Jawa Engineer. You want to put BB-8 instead of Jawa Engineer, but BB-8 is going to be using your Jedi Raid teams anyways. So throwing in someone else who could work there. So Jawa Engineer has a lot of abilities that don't do attacks. So he's going to call in some assists. And also I should note the Soothe ability that removes your cycles of pain and suffering, as you guys will see in some of the videos, can call in the Akbar assists. 
And what's going to happen here is hopefully you're going to let Leia be stealth the whole time. She's going to stay stealth because that's how she works. So she can never be countered. And just start stacking up the cycles of pain and suffering on her. She's going to deal a lot of damage. Someone in my guild tried it with a pretty undergeared Leia and did about 1 million damage. So there's hope that this team could do a lot of damage. And basically... You're going to have her just constantly assist, she's going to do the double or triple tap, she's going to gain Terminator whenever she hits the target, and she's also going to gain those cycles of pain and suffering on her own. So she's going to be a monster in terms of dealing a lot of damage. Hermit Yoda can never attack, he's always going to be calling an assist. Your Jawa Engineer, his basic ability calls in thermal detonators on the opposing team, but those can't be countered because they're not direct damage. Grand Animal Thrawn, he has Fracture, and he has the ability to restore protection to your team. So there's a lot of protection generation with both Hermit, with both Hermit Yoda and with Grand Animal Thrawn. Admiral Akbar can call in the specials, he can call in heals, call in assists with, her, with Princess Leia as well. So this team, I think, could be pretty good in Phase 2. I'd love for some to try it. I have not had the ability to try it. We're already in Phase 4. So I have not been able to try it like I wanted to. So feel free to try it. Let me know how it goes. So yeah, teams with assists do great. Teams that stealth also do great. Anything that can mitigate the counter chance from Scion allow you to do a lot of damage. Those are teams you want to go for. And stay away from the teams that can do a lot of uh, a lot of direct attacks. Because Scion can really counter those and really do a lot of damage. And yeah, just uh, just hopefully things with Death Mark and Expose can also really work well in Heroic. We don't know yet because I'm pretty sure Heroic's going to have a lot smaller health pool than normal. So we're probably not going to get as much damage from abilities like Death Mark and Expose. But we will see once we get there. So let's go ahead and go into some of these fights. I'll show you the mechanics. I'll give you some tips on these as I narrate through them, and then we will close out this video. So here I'm going to be using an Admiral Akbar lead with Han Solo and Commander Luke Skywalker with the two other Rebel allies, Hermit Yoda and General Kenobi. General Kenobi is actually going to be pretty handy here because he hands out the crit immunity, he also taunts, and he gives himself foresight. So he's going to be really helpful in mitigating the damage to your team because he's going to be taunting for Scion. He's going to have foresight to dodge some of these big attacks. And of course he also gives out retribution to your team. So use that before Scion does a big AoE ability and you'll go ahead and counter and you'll just do some nice damage to him. For your damage dealers, Commander Luke and Han Solo, preferably you should keep them with Cycles of Suffering and always soothe from the other characters. That's going to give them a lot of bonus damage, and you'll see Commander Luke Skywalker ends up doing a ton of damage at some points during this fight. Make sure you get the Master's Training buffs on both Commander Luke and Han Solo ASAP. That's going to help maximize their damage, and you're just going to go ahead and hopefully have them call in a lot of assists. There will be some RNG here. You can see Speed Down is sticking to your Darth Scion, it's helping slow him down. So Luke Skywalker, pretty useful here. Getting the buffs up with crit chance up, with your team evasion up, that's also going to be helpful. Dodging, like I said, is great for this fight. So you'll see now Kenobi has Foresight and Taunt, and he just dodged that attack from Darth Scion, and pretty easy. So as it goes on here, pretty much Hermit Yoda has 100% evasion when stealthed, so he's never going to have to really worry about getting any cycles of pain. And General Kenobi, he's going to get some cycles of pain, same with Admiral Akbar. But just keep cleansing them. Again, those call in the assist, as you'll see, use a protection regeneration with Hermit Yoda. You will need the Zeta on his ability to get the protection regeneration, but it's definitely an easy one to recommend. Actually, I think Hermit Yoda could be one of the MVPs of this team. In fact, just of the raid in general, his protection regeneration, his master's training ability, the fact he can easily escape from battles. If he's the last character in your raid fight, he will escape on his own and you can use him in another team. So you'll see as we go through this, eventually Commander Luke Skywalker is going to use his special ability, use the force on one of the adds and you'll see 77,000 damage with it. And that poor bastard, he just never knew what hit him. And it's, it's, it's beautiful just watching these characters just do this much damage. And there you go, Han Solo just did a ton of damage with that team. Master's training more for everybody. And uh, let's, see what, uh, let's see what we can do here in a second. And maybe, maybe, yep, yeah, here we go. 77,000 with that use the force ability with a cycle of suffering on Commander Luke. So, yeah, pretty good. I did cleanse there with Han Solo, probably a bad idea. Should probably keep that cycle of suffering on him, let him heal that massive amount of damage. And you can see 22,000 with Commander Luke there, and again, I soothed again. I'm showing some stuff that you really shouldn't do. Keep those cycles of suffering on Commander Luke and Han Solo. Don't follow my example there. 
but that's pretty simple. It's an easy explanation of what's going on here. And you'll see as this fight goes on, they actually manage to pretty much keep all of their protection on. And they never really go into much danger of dying because the protection regeneration from Hermit Yoda is great. His basic ability regenerates protection. His special ability regenerates protection. Everybody here regenerates protection and they're just gonna be just fine with using these abilities to help deal a lot of damage. So that is it for phase two. If you have any questions, feel free to ask down below in this comment section. I'll do what I can to answer them. I hope you all have enjoyed this video. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe. If you guys have some pretty decent screenshots of raid damage in phases three and four, feel free to drop by my Discord server. I've got a text channel there where people can just drop in screenshots, talk about what the teams did, how they worked, what was good or bad about them. I would like to talk about those teams for phase three and four because I don't want to talk about just Jedi Ray. Everybody wants to talk about Jedi Ray. All the YouTubers are like, hey, look at Jedi Ray. Ignore Jedi Ray. Let's talk about some of these other teams that's not her. Because we want to see what else we have out there that's not just going to focus on her. We want to see what else we can bring to the table to do more damage in this raid. So if you find some teams that work in those phases, drop them down in that Discord server. I will pull them into this Phase 3 video and Phase 4 videos so we can show the, U the YouTube community, the whole Galaxy Heroes community, what other teams they can use so we can get these raids cleared, help get our Darth Treya shards for our guilds, and really help move our guilds along. But anyways guys, thanks again for watching, and to all of my McMinions out there, I will talk to you guys later.